Hello there guys and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. Yes, I do realise that I've only been doing one live stream a week for the last three to four weeks. But fuck me, I've been a little bit busy. So I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Though surprisingly enough, at the day that this video should be going up, I'll be having a conversation with Conscious Caracal about situations and happenings that are going on in South Africa at this moment in time and how since last time I spoke to him which must have been a good six to eight maybe even close to ten months ago how things have changed and how his position was of how it's not that bad out there to now advocating against should we say for a lack of a better term Racist trying to take away flags away from people because it connotates the wrong type of emotion into people, even though their flag hasn't been used for generations. But somehow these type of things keep on happening in South Africa. So if you're interested in that type of conversation, please turn in tonight around about 7 o'clock uh, Greenwich Mean Time and we'll be having a great conversation about all those type of stuff. Though... Let's actually get into the video, I suppose, for today. And the BBC have decided that they are going to put out an amazing article which comes out to this, which is forced penetration if a woman focuses... Sorry. I kind of read it and I've lost my train of thought because I've read it before and I still don't really understand what the clarification of the question is now i'll get into it very shortly but let's actually read the actual question without me stumbling of how stupid it is so forced penetration if a woman forces a man to have sex is that rape now the more astute of you the more astute of you will notice that there's a word that is in there and a phrase of a sentence that is actually part of the definition of rape which is if someone forces someone to have sex then it is rape the pretext of the word is forced or forces in this instance for the sentence but somehow that's a question if i was to force a woman to have sex that would obviously be rape but if a woman was to force a man to have sex, we've got to ask the question, is it rape? Now, I want people to really understand before I delve into this video. I'm not an MRA. I'm not a men's rights advocate. I'm not a MGTOW. I'm somebody who actually wants the equality of rights. I'm an egalitarian. Though, again, labels. They don't really mean too much because apparently everybody has their own interpretation of what the labels mean anyway. But generally, I'm an egalitarian. And this really grinds my fucking gears. So now that we've got the intro and everything else out of the way for that, let's actually delve in to this video and actually find out what they're going on about, shall we? So let's start to move down. So, when a man has a penetrative sex with a woman without her consent, that's rape. But what if a woman makes a man have a penetrative sex with her without his consent? That's not rape under the law of England and Wales. But the author of a new study of the phenomenon says perhaps it should be. I mean, I don't understand why the conversation is why it should or why it shouldn't be. If it is that way for women under law, then why is it not the same way for men under law? It's about forcing somebody to have sex with you. Now, I can already tell that there's going to be people in the comment section or just generalized people that watch this video that won't comment that will go yeah but there's different biology there's the man that actually has to be physically stimulated for anything to actually happen and so on and so forth 
Really? I mean, in a nice way. Men and boys get physically aroused when they sleep. It doesn't take much to actually physically stimulate a person to be able, or a man to be able to have an erection. Now, that doesn't mean that they've enjoyed it. After all, male rape victims that are not gay, that have been raped, can actually physically ejaculate due to the actual rape. The same as women can as well. That does not mean that they enjoyed it. That does not mean that they consented to that. It means that the bodily functions that happen due to stimuli actually occurred without the person's consent, which is why we call that fucking rape. But let's carry on. I'm sure people that are much more intelligent than me will be able to explain why we still have this as a conflicting, should we say conflicting, adverse law where it's a case of there are disparities on both sides but yet one side has a much bigger disparity where it's not even classified as the same for the same action but you know equality carrying on so so dr weir of lancaster university law school carried out the first research into forced penetration in the uk the link for this will be linked down below so if you want to go and look at that hyperlink then by all means please go and do it's an interesting read in 2016 to 2017 gathering information from, from more than 200 men via an online survey Again, not the best of studies for online surveys as people cannot have their stories validated. Now, that doesn't mean that I think that 200 men lied, but still, it's not the best way of trying to gather information, but it's a good way of starting the conversation. So let's do that as starting the conversation, not trying to say that this is a vehement uh, peer-reviewed study. Let's just go on to that. So... Her latest study, published this week, which is obviously 2019, is based on one-to-one -one interviews with 30 men between May 2018 and July 2019, which is a lot better, which means that it's verified, it can be peer-reviewed, it can be listened to, it can be, it's a great way of actually producing a study, which is why it's called a study and not a survey. So again, the hyperlink for that from the BBC is actually provided, so please go and read that, it's actually very interesting. So this explores in greater detail the context in which forced penetration occurs, its consequences and the response of the criminal justice system. All the participants were anonymized or anonymous for other people. But I will call one of them John. John says the first sign that something was wrong was when his partner started to self-harm. After a particularly frightening incident, he rushed her to A&E for treatment. The couple spent hours discussing possible psychological causes. About six months later, instead of harming herself, she trained her sights on John. I was sitting in the living room, and obviously this is John speaking, and she'd just come in from the kitchen, punched me very hard on the nose and run off giggling, John says. The violence then started happening quite regularly. Now, a lot of people are going to go, well, why didn't he leave? Why didn't he do that? Just stem your reaction and let's carry on reading. She tried to get help from her GP, John says. She had some counselling and was referred to a psychologist, though didn't attend the appointment. She'd come home from her job and basically demand sex. Now, again... I know that a lot of people are going to go, well, what's wrong with that? We always want sex and everything else like that. I am, I'm kind of with you. I understand that. I'm a, a man after all and I kind of want sex most of the time. But I will throw in this caveat in there. For anybody that has actually had a relationship where, should we say sex was on tap, for instance, which I have had, it is a case that eventually you do actually just don't want it because it's so readily available. It's an interesting phenomenon to say the least. But just because that it's on demand doesn't mean that the person that is demanding it 
is actually having it mutually reciprocal. It's the same thing as if a man was demanding sex off of a woman all of the time, she may not necessarily want it all the time. Just because that somebody is a man doesn't mean that they continuously, all of the time, want sex. And I know a lot of people are actually going to put into the comment section, well, anybody that doesn't want sex all the time is not really a man. And believe me, I have actually seen people actually put that in. That's the reason why I'm actually saying this. That maybe, just maybe, that we stop using people as a generalization and we realize that individuals that are in groups actually have different needs. And to tar one group as something and say that this doesn't happen within that group so you're not a real bloody person, or no, no true Scotsman fallacy, maybe we should drop that and realize that there are people that do not want sex 24 seven. Otherwise we would call them nymphs or nymphomaniacs. But again, let's carry on with the actual point and carry on. She would be violent and it got to the stage that I dreaded her coming back home from work. Yes. So, on one occasion, John woke up to find that his partner had handcuffed his right arm to the metal bed frame, then started hitting him on the head with a loudspeaker from the stereo system beside the bed, tied up his other arm with some nylon rope and tried to force him to have sex. Now, think about that for a second. Imagine if that was reversed. Would that be rape? Even though they would be in a marital situation, would that be classified as rape? And if any of you sensible people answered yes to that, why is it not rape if it's a man that's having it done to them? So, scared and in pain, John was unable to comply with her demands. So she just beat him again and left him chained up for half an hour, before returning and freeing him. Afterwards, she refused to talk about what happened. Not long after that, she became pregnant and the violence abated. But a few months after the baby was born, John again woke one night to discover that he was being handcuffed to the bed. Then, he says, his partner forced him Viagra <laughs> and gagged him. There was nothing I could do about it, he says. Later, I went and sat in a shower for I don't know how long. I eventually went downstairs. The first thing she said to me when I went into the room was, what's for dinner? I would like to point out that the BBC are asking a question about law that is already put into place and should the law change. I don't think on this occasion that the BBC is actually going out of their way to try and say that this isn't rape. Or should it be classified as rape? I, I think it's generally a question to try and draw more, should we say, awareness maybe to the story. But then again, I could be being really generous to the BBC on this aspect. Possibly. I'm not saying I am and I'm not saying it isn't, but I could be. I suppose it's interesting to me because you spend so long trying to debunk the ideas of feminism, debunk the ideas of the left and so on and so forth. And yet you get to the point where you have a look at these types of stories and you have the validation of what you've been saying for such a long time. And I don't know. It seems to be a case of maybe the pendulum is starting to swift again. Maybe that metronome is starting to shift towards another Overton window and slightly towards the right, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe there's some sort of forms of common sense that are now re-emerging. And the ideas of, should we say, radicalization? Maybe. I suppose that's a bit of a strong word for nowadays colloquial language or the lexicon that we use. But I, I still think that it's the idea. I do think it's the radicals on the left and the radical feminists in themselves for this instance of story that would say that in some aspects, that men can't be victims of this, it's only a woman that can be a victim of this, and so on and so forth. Now again, I'm not trying to create a straw man, I'm not trying to create steel man necessarily, I'm just trying to say that there are people that do do this. Does that mean that all feminists do that? No, of course they don't. But there are some, and those some are a loud minority, and that loud minority then gets put to the forefront and exposed not as 
the actual point of the movement, but is exposed as the forefront of the movement, which it may not necessarily be. And I suppose in conjunction with my last video, not last live stream, I really want people to start calling out their own sides a lot more. And that's for the left, the right, the feminists, the MRAs, whoever, whatever, wherever. Because if you don't call out your side, then people can say that this is actually a representative of your side. And that goes for people that are supposedly white supremacists that should actually call out people that do espouse that sort of language. And vice versa. The feminists that would say that this isn't a form of rape. Because it is. It is a form of rape. It is literally rape. If somebody forces you to have sex with them, you are no longer having sex with them. You are being raped by them. By the definition of law, you are forcing them to have intercourse by coercive means or by other means. And that's just... Again, I don't understand how people could even interpret this. I know it's a question by the BBC, but I think it's more of a... It doesn't seem as a questioning piece, as a biased BBC piece. It seems more of a, here's the question that we're asking, and here's the facts why it probably is. Now, again, I could be, should we say, over generous to the BBC on this one. I could be. I'm not saying I am. I'm not saying I'm not. Again, I know I'm reiterating, but I feel that it needs to be said. Because it's something that we do need to talk about. There are petitions out there to be able to change this law, by the way, to actually put PTP, uh, Force to Penetrate, as an actual law. I will try and see if I can find that, and I will link it down below. And I do suggest that if you are interested and you are from the UK, please do sign that petition. And if you don't want to sign a petition, that's, that's fair enough. But if you wouldn't mind linking the video and the petition to people on your social media that you think that might do, not everybody, but might do, then would you please be able to do that? No, that's not to promote myself on this instance. It's mostly to promote the actual petition to be able to change the law and to be able to link to other sources that are actually put into the video. The reason why I say link the video as well, because it gives a person's opinion about what's actually happening as well. But again, if you don't want to link the video, please don't link the actual petition and produce that and share that around as much as you can. Now, this video is going up on YouTube. It is also going up on BitChute as well. It will be going on Minds and Twitter and so on and so forth and whatnot. So on any of those platforms, if you do watch this video and you do think that this should be classified as a rape under UK law and you live in the UK, please sign that petition. Please share that petition. With well, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you all again tonight at 8 p.m. Sorry, 7 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time with my chat with Conscious Caracal about South Africa and what's going on and what he's been up to recently. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you very much. And I'll speak to you all again real soon.